about to discover a very important topic, a topic that could literally make or break your ability to communicate effectively in the 21st century. What is that? Emoji. Now, some of you might be feeling like this <laughs> or like that. But this is a topic that I'm going to convince you. Emojis are perhaps the most significant advancement in human communications as we know it. But first, let's take a look back at the evolution of human communications. Of course, there was verbal language that developed long before we could document it, but then came the first revolution, the invention of the pictograph. Now, the pictograph marked the beginning of written language, but because these writings were in stone, they were immobile. So that led to the second revolution, the invention of the printing press and paper. And this was great because we could now transport a message from one place to the next without actually being there. But then came the third revolution, the invention of computer-mediated communications or what some of you might call the assassination of American literacy as we know it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but this was incredible because for the first time we could communicate with anyone virtually anywhere just by accessing a computer or a phone or a mobile device. However, there was one problem with this latest revolution. It was the first one that was actually replacing face-to-face -face communications. And that would be okay, except face-to-face -face communications has always been emotional, and computer-mediated communications is not. Now, I'm sure you're saying, well, great, but like, we all know what effective communication is, right? It's not just what you say, but... Right, because it takes more than just words and information for us to develop and maintain relationships. There's a well-known and often cited psychologist by the name of Albert Morabian who did a fabulous study, huge study. Everyone loved it, bigly. And uh, he discovered that only 7% of effective communication is verbal, meaning the words that we're saying. And 38% is vocal, meaning our tone of voice and how we say what we say. And 55% is nonverbal, meaning just our body language. So that means when we're texting, literally 93% of our communicative skills are negated. Now, I'm sure some of the significant others out there are saying, great, let's just keep it this way. <laughs> but this is actually a big problem. I'm going to take a quick poll. How many of you would say that you send more text messages than you do making phone calls if you need to communicate something? Right, because this is the world that we now live in. And according to a 2014 Gallup poll, text messages now exceed phone conversations as a dominant form of communication for Americans under the age of 50, reaching nearly 60% for some age groups of all the communicating that we're doing, we're doing over some form of text. Now, I'm sure we can all relate to the difficulty of communicating <laughs> emotions over text messages <laughs> or simply being misunderstood or getting that email reply that really wasn't warranted based on the intent of your original message. So what has technology done to respond to this need to restore social intimacy and emotions back to our everyday communications? Now, I'm sure we're all used to you know, FaceTime and Google Hangouts, right, and Skype. And this allows us to see each other when we're talking on the phone. Uh, but just like I said, phone conversations are quickly going out of style, so there's that. Uh, then we've got Apple's digital touch features. And this is cool because we can send our heart rate or doodle a message or even tap, one, tap someone on the wrist when they have an Apple Watch. Now, that restores some social intimacy, right? But then we also have Apple's iMessage effects. And these are super cool because you can send balloons and confetti and even slam down a text message on someone's iMessage interface. That's my favorite. Um, but if you haven't accessed these, please do. They're worth like 10 cool points every time you send one. But while all of these are great, and they are, perhaps the most significant advancement in restoring social intimacy back to our everyday communications is emoji. Now, where did emoji come from? I'm glad you asked. 
Uh, an employee at a Japanese telecom company back in the 1990s came up with a brilliant idea to add simplistic cartoon images to their paging interface. And this was a way that they could compete in the market and attract more teenagers. Well, this was so successful that not only did the Japanese telecom adopt it, but when Apple came out with the first iPhone back in 2007, they decided to incorporate a hidden keyboard for emoji just to break into the Japanese market. Now, how many of you can remember having to download that Japanese language app, right, just to unlock your emoji keyboard? Anybody remember that? Well, that's because Apple never really intended for us to find it. But, of course, we did, and emoji was well on its way to becoming the fastest growing language in history. Now, by 2015, 74% of Americans were using emojis, sending an average of 96 emojis and stickers per day. Now, believe it or not, this cultural and social shift in the way that we communicate and this new use of emoji has been the subject of real scientific research because somebody has some time on their hands, clearly. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, I'm one of those people. Um, and, um, and what is being found is that not only are emojis becoming a part of our everyday vernacular, they're starting to fill the gap left by facial expressions. So there's a study that was published in the Journal of Social Neuroscience, and Dr. Owen Church found that when we look at a smiley face on a screen, the same parts of our brain are activated as when we look at a real human face. Not only that, humans are now having facial mimicry responses to emoji, like you see up here. And lastly, he found that our mood now changes to match the emotion of an emoji that we're sending or receiving. Now think about that. That means that our brains are now processing emoji as emotional communication and not words. And what's even more interesting is that we were not born with digital communication skills, right? That means that emoji is actually creating a new brain pattern within us and doing the same thing that tone of voice and gestures do in our face-to-face -face communications. Uh, anybody else feel like this? I mean, I was going to do a mic drop right there, but I have this, so I can't. Um, but this is really interesting. So what's next in this evolution of human communication and this new language of emoji? Well, diversity and inclusion, of course, because it's not enough that we can communicate emotions like happy and sad and mad, right? We need to be able to communicate those emotions with the same social and cultural references that we have available to us in our day-to-day -day communications. So for example, your friend texts you and says, oh my God, I got the job, I'm so excited. For some people, your response might look like this. Yes, right? <laughs> and for others, it might be this, right? But see, I grew up in the church culture. I'm a little animated, so my response would be this. <laughs> and that's why my co-founders and I created Eboticons, because we wanted to restore that social intimacy and that, that fun personality <laughs> back to our everyday communications. All right, here's another example. Say you're saying goodbye to your colleagues, you're going off onto a new adventure and you're leaving your job. Depending on your experience, you might want to send something like this, right? <laughs> For others, you might feel this way, that might help. Uh, but when I left my job back in October uh, to go and pursue entrepreneurship full time, I got the nerve to send this, okay? <laughs> and. <laughs> That's because I had one opportunity to leave a lasting impression and to show how I felt to the colleagues that I would miss so much. So, believe it or not, guys, we really have stumbled upon a whole new way to communicate <laughs> in the digital age. And while emojis and text messaging will never replace the old way, these little surrogate faces are going to help us to communicate more effectively. So, what is all of this about? And, and why am I even here talking about it? Like, what's the takeaway? The next time you see an emoji, I don't want you to dismiss it as some infantile cartoon. I want you to embrace 
the emoji. I want you to become the emoji. I want you to learn to express yourself through the emoji. Because they really are the language of the future. Thank you. <laughs>